Hey guys, welcome to another review on this channel. This time we'll be looking into another game from Riot Games. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked that the games in Riot Games is finally living up to itself because they're officially starting to release new titles and it's looking wonderful. Now, Riot Games' first major release, not including League of Legends, is Legends of Runeterra. It's a free card game based and set off the LoL universe. Now, I just want to put this disclaimer in my review right now that this game currently is in beta. So if something changes down the line, which differs from my review, or there's an updated version that does something different, then I would want you to base it off that version and not this review, since that one will be up to date more than mine. However, I have been playing Legends of Runeterra since the it open beta be released maybe a week ago, marathon. and honestly, I'm having a blast. This game is a lot of fun if you're the type of person who enjoys card games with deep mechanics Boy, and intricate systems who are in you play. Again? Starting off this review, Let's talk about how the game functions first. I feel like it's a good place. Now, long story short, like every other card game out there, there's fundamentally two sides, yours and your opponent's, where the objective is to destroy each other's nexus, aka their base, by reducing their life points to zero or less. Now, what makes Legends of Runeterra so enjoyable for me personally is that they've slowed down the card game formula by implementing an attack token where players must wait until the attack token is on their side to obviously attack, of course. What this does is it gives one side a chance to attack and not have to worry about defending, while the other side is on the defensive and using cards or characters to block oncoming attacks, maybe with spells as well to mitigate damage. To me, it's a neat little addition where I'm not constantly having to worry about defending each turn, and it adds another layer of strategy to your cards where you can play and plan out your strategy not having to constantly worry. And what's great about it is that if you deem that a card is more worthy than let's say the damage you will receive from your opponents that turn, you can simply opt out to not defend which saves your cards from any damage at the cost of your health and potentially use them next turn for whatever strategy you might have. Now, of course there are certain decks or characters that can get around this potential attack token where they can attack every turn if you play your cards right but the gist of what I just mentioned before is pretty much how this card game functions. Most of the time, decks will be built around certain characters and themes. To be honest, my favourites are the Shadow Isle theme, which tend to use disposable troops that get buffed from their champion cards, such as overwhelming the enemy with a fuck ton of spiders from Elise, with all their spider minions getting buffed and destroying your enemy by overswarming them, or Playing as Hecarim as well with these shadow troops, you can tell I honestly, I just like to swarm people and just destroy them. And what makes these characters so great is that there are certain conditions you must follow with each character, which can result in your card leveling up and gaining far more power or conditional effects, which will change how your overall strategy works. It's a nice addition to the others, and I can tell they have put a lot of thought into this aspect of the game. They've also added a lot of cool cinematics and dialogue in this game, as well as for these character cards. So it can feel rather epic when you put a, let's say, a champion card down, who is a rival of your enemy's champion card based off the lore from the lore universe. And they do have a bit of banter between each other, and it is a nice touch, it does make the game feel a bit more alive. Also, the UI seems rather flushed out for a beta, and it is nice what they've done. But this is one of the aspects where they could use some slight adjustments, such as they've implemented a hovering system where it pretty much seems like a tooltip heaven right now, where most things you hover over and it displays the information. But this is where it also falls down as not everything will display information by hovering over it. You can tell it's not completely um, done right now and it will most likely be done in the future. An example would be, um, as of right now, if you hover over your cards, and let's say you hover over the attack and defending aspect of it, the numbers, it doesn't display right now, and sometimes I tend to forget which is which, so it would just be nice if I was able to hover over and it showed me. Now, moving on as well, into the main menu, this is where the majority of your planning slash strategizing will happen, because you acquire new cards here, you build new decks here, this is fundamentally your bread and butter of the game. Now, starting off, we'll open up the options, it is a bit barren right now, with most options missing. It is a beta to be fair, but it, it, it is noticeable. So if you if you want to change your, let's say, resolution, your depth of field, etc, etc, you'll probably have to wait until the game goes into full open. Because I'm sure they will include all this stuff as time goes on, but I am reviewing it currently right now in its current state, so I have to point out these things. 
Moving on to the cards tab, this is where you'll sort out your correlating cards to try and create the ultimate deck pretty much. You'll choose up to two of six factions to create your deck where you'll pit it against AI or other players in normal or ranked game modes. It was honestly a lot of fun trying and testing decks where you'd pull certain combos out with your created deck and it felt fantastic when you did pull it off. Now, the UI for this page is split into two sections. On the right hand side are your new cards fundamentally. It's here you'll go through, sort through different regions or through their levels, mix and match and choose which card you wish to implement into your existing deck. Now, it's this is where problems start to arise with this game and it's not that sorting through your new cards is a problem, it's sorting through your existing deck that's the major issue here. It's fundamentally two different worlds. Like, sorting through new cards is easy and simple. Sorting through your existing deck is a pain in the ass because half the options aren't even there. If you want to take out certain cards or you want to look for certain cards in your existing deck, it's fundamentally a huge challenge. And to be honest, most of the time, since it's so annoying, I just make a new deck. It's so much easier to just make a new deck than to edit an old and existing one. And that's a shame because I wish it wasn't. There's also a lack of overall cards right now, I feel. Certain types of cards I feel outweigh others as there are more options available because more of these types of cards exist, such as Elusive Deck. I feel like the Elusive Deck right now is kind of broken. Of course, I do understand once again, this is a beta. So it is a given that is lacking in some aspects. So I feel as time goes on more and as you play it for longer, this game will definitely become more and more amazing as more cards get introduced. But the lacking of cards is a bit noticeable right now. Okay guys, anyway, moving on to what I honestly feel like the most important part of this entire review should be, it's the monetization. For a free game such as this, I'm not going to be unrealistic and say you cannot monetize this game, it's banned, you can never do it. Like, at the end of the day, Riot Games is a business and this game is free, so they need to be able to monetize it some way. That, that's just the nature of business, guys. But if the monetization does ruin the game, such as extravagant purchases needed to play the game, or it's a loot box extravaganza with just like, you know, loot boxes shooting out their fucking ass, then, you know, I'm, I'm gonna just leave. There's no point in staying. Now, I'm gonna throw a clip in here somewhere but the lead developers have said that they will never do randomized loot boxes slash card packs ever in this game. Hit fucking hooray. Bottom line, in Legends of Runeterra, you will never pay for randomized packs. And you have a bunch of different ways to get the cards you actually want. No matter what, you'll end up with multiple decks for both casual duels and the competitive meta. We're really excited to focus less on selling packs and more on the things that make a card game great. Deep, interactive strategy, frequent releases and balance updates, and endless experimentation. Now, after watching that clip, they specifically said there'll be no randomized loot boxes, so we have them by their word. I swear to God, if I see a fucking loot box in this game, I'll come down there myself and fucking backhand. No, I won't do that, but God, please, just for the love of God, don't put loot boxes in this game. Now, opening up the actual store, um, it should be mentioned that every card can be purchased with real money. And honestly, their lowest price for me personally was around $8 Australian, which is a rather steep asking price, but it isn't randomized. You get whatever you're paying for. And to be fair, this game has been good to me in terms of rewards you do get. Earning EXP does grant you card slash card tokens, which you can use to unlock the card rarity of that token level you got. And furthermore, each region has its own reward system, allowing players to get the cards they need for certain regions if you wish to focus your strategy towards that certain region. Now, I'm not a psychic and I can't predict the future and how they might change it, but as of right now during the beta, the monetization feels fair. I feel like I'm getting a lot of rewards simply for just playing the game, which I feel is a great thing. So, overall, if you haven't touched or played Legends of Runeterra and you love or even have a mild interest in card games, I do highly suggest it. I'm going to give Legends of Runeterra a 7 out of 10. It's great. It's, it's got a great foundation. There's something solid there. Decks actually do feel unique, and this game does have a lot of great things implemented into it, but it still is lacking in some areas, such as the UI, uh, menus, more cards needed, but I'm sure as time goes on, 
um, so will this game and they will improve and patch it as need be because the developers do seem like they care about this kind of stuff and they do seem really into card games so I'm sure they have a great love for this genre and they will hopefully improve it the way I want it to be improved. Anyway guys, I'm off to go play some more <laughs> to be honest so I hope you have a great day and peace.